Next up, 10 Colorado painters were given a super fun and also a very interesting task to illustrate what would be the cover image of a short science fiction story. The stories were also written by local authors, and these pairings were shown at a Colorado Springs gallery as part of the sci-fi show. Kate went in to see how more than 40 local artists had a part in the making of this exhibit. 10 science fiction short stories written by 10 different authors, depicted by 10 local painters. And each story theatrically interpreted, recorded, given an original musical score, and then put on display. It's the sci-fi show. Sci-fi is such a wide playing field. I'm an old 80s nerd that loves Star Wars and all the great star, all the great sci-fi from the 70s and 80s. I mean, I, give me give me Flash Gordon and Barbarella and I'll be happy. I mean, I just like that genre. I think aesthetically it's fascinating, it's creative. There's all kinds of just like access points to it. And I think the other thing we we sort of started in is just that idea that who else is a secret geek around here? And then the idea just kept morphing from there. First we we got the writers, tasked them with putting their stories together, lined up the artists, brought them all together, paired up the artists with the kind of the outlines of what the stories are going to be. Um, the writers finished writing their stories, we got them to the artists, and the artists started the process of putting together a piece. We got the voice actors in, recorded, edited, set it to music. That's the sort of thing that happens here. Football games get called off on account of mountain lions. On the walls we've got the piece, we made manuscripts of each story, we did kind of our own iPod retrospective as well by gathering all of the community's old iPods together. Each depiction, each illustration has an iPod and, and headphones with the story on, so you can stand in front of the piece and listen to the story. Ada 2059, written by Kelly Palmblad, depicted by April Dawes, read by Heather Powell Brown. Part one, the expectation. Getting viewers to interact with the piece is always tricky and watch people come in and immediately put their headphones on and start listening. And sometimes people would spend you know, the full hour with the story. Some of these stories range from 10 minutes to an hour. And people would be in front of there and listen to the entire thing. And it was, it was cool, like it was rewarding. You know, it was rewarding to see this interaction, this play, and the smiles. And I think one of my favorite pairings in the show was um, Simon Padilla with Stephen Hayward. Stephen wrote The Sneezing, which is a just l lovely, kooky, weird little story about a young teenage girl writing in her journal about uh, an epidemic that's hit the, hit the world. The idea behind the sneezing is that there's a, a virus that has been unleashed on the planet Earth. It makes you sneeze three times. It makes you sneeze once, twice, and the third time you sneeze it all away. You sneeze away your name, your telephone number. If you were kissing somebody when you sneeze that third time, you forgot their name, their phone number, and what made you want to kiss them in the first place. The thing that's cool about the painting and that the painting captures is that when you sneeze, it, you look exactly uh, the way that you did before you sneeze. It doesn't change you in any way except your eyes, the irises of which are turned a robin's egg blue. I knew that Simon was thinking about doing a kind of retro, old school sci-fi novel cover, and uh, I just thought that was exactly right. To tap in to the sensationalism and the improbability of the story that I was writing. I was so intrigued by the project. Um, I'd never written sci-fi before. The name of my story is Chasers. A friend of mine had lent me the book Einstein's Dreams. It's kind of talking about different circumstances of time and space. And one that really stuck with me was a theory in which an entire lifetime would exist over the course of a day. So those who were born at night would then die during the day. I was thinking if I was born during the day and then I had to deal with the second half of my life being entirely in darkness, I deal with seasonal depression. <laughs> and so I think I would be the type of person chasing daytime and so I thought, what would that look like? And then I got to see the painting made very movie poster-esque of the story, and I was just so pleased to see the way that it had, it had manifested, because it does look like a movie poster, and it looks like a movie poster I'd wanna, I'd wanna watch. It's the world, and the world is divided in two colors, and then it's someone running, like the silhouette of a person running across it, running to a different change of light. A lot of times as, as a studio painter, we, you know, we find our way of doing, we find our thing that we're into, 
and rarely do we get that opportunity to jump into a different genre. Certainly on my part, we, we decided what story I was doing and I said, oh crap, I have to learn to draw spaceships. <laughs> <laughs> and I think a lot of our artists had that same moment of confrontation of either subject matter or uh, a level of rendering that they had not played in before. And so it really became a stretch for everybody involved. Staged readings of the stories took place against the backdrop of the exhibit. We had cosplayers show up. There were there were a couple uh, there was a couple who were out on their Friday night we date. Had we had cosplayers. I kid you not, they were dressed like Lord of the Rings, yeah. and uh, they showed up for a little bit, and then went when it went to go get sushi. But <laughs> yeah, I couldn't couldn't ask for a better turnout than that. Looking around the room uh, during the gallery opening, it suddenly struck me that uh, what we were seeing in that room was like the best reflection of the Colorado Springs art scene, like at its finest. It is kooky, it is weird, it has room for everybody. As a gallerist, one of the things I, that I always try to strive through is giving an opportunity for, for viewers. I, I, I really hold my viewer in high regard, like I want them to have fun. Like, I, yeah, and art can be fun. You know, we've lived the last 50 years of pretending that art has to be something other than fun. I love when Claire says that she wanted to find all the secret geeks in Colorado Springs. I'm a secret geek too, you know. <laughs> Michael, not a secret, bud. Really? I was no. fine with that. I thought, like, well, okay. <laughs>